lot of service workers are like, no, and we want to like, we want to create a better model, and we actually want to create systems within the environment that helps protect them. So an awesome shift is happening where that's becoming less tolerable um, for staff to have to put up with that, and there's strategies that we're going to get into and talk about. Um, yeah, and then toxicity. So you have this cool culture of like, yes, we have a family, yes, we community build, we have jokes, this banter happening. But then when it goes to an abusive place or a toxic place is when you have the abuse of power, um, either with customers or inside management, supervisors. Um, you have unwanted behaviors such as touching or toxic joking, gone too far at the expense of others, that lo locker room banter in the back of house, like, can be usually showing the, the, like, toxic masculine, you know, dynamic where there's a lot of sexist jokes or, like, homophobic sexism, misgendering, unwanted comments, etc. Like, we're seeing more of that in the back of house as, like, that, that kind of, like, bro dude, like, culture um, has a, a welcome <laughs> uh, climate and so yeah and so and that's when these harmful behaviors come become the norm so yeah I just wanted to build that picture that's what we're talking about that's what we're here to talk about I'd love to like hear from who's here and what your experience is and like fill in what I didn't name um, what else do you know about the culture and just like the good and the bad like what's happening and yeah what's your experience and why is this an interesting topic to you well i guess every so often i hear stories about a restaurant where there's uh the boss or the manager or or there's some type of harassment or assault happening and then usually i don't hear much more about that story so then <laughs> So, the, so then there's not much follow-up, and then, and then it's sort of it, 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 it fades. When, when of course, I believe, I, I believe it's still a concurrent problem. It just hasn't, hasn't made the, the media or whatever for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks. I do like I work at Woodbelly, and we do a mm -hmm. lot of catering. Oh right. And we have had lots of experiences where it's like a wedding and people are drinking and partying and having a good time and then like somebody's creepy uncle just like crosses the line and grabs someone's butt or just is like encroaching on our space and mm -hmm. ever since I've worked there we've had a really good culture of like we have a big peel that like goes in the 800 degree oven and people will like kind of hold it and brandish it and like tell people to leave and oh, right. they yeah. do <laughs> and right. so there's like a real sense of camaraderie like there's not That's as good. much distinction between front of house and back of house because we're all a crew we're that's all working good, that's together great. it's yeah. wonderful um and i've always felt pretty supported at that job by like the masculine people um and like everyone but um and i've had moments where i've been in a position of power and like had an opportunity to be a good bystander and where i felt like i kind of missed the mark and then moments where I felt like I yeah. uh, stood up to my potential and like showed up for my people. Um, and so that is like an element of like interacting with customers and um, wedding goers. And like we have a pretty strong perspective of like we're kind and professional to the people who come in and also we're not subordinate to them. They're mm -hmm. coming in to buy. Mm -hmm. Our products we're mm -hmm. serving them at their wedding like we don't have a customer is always right perspective um, which I really appreciate um, and we have a thing like a in our contracts that we sign with wedding clients an addendum where we can stop service at any time if right, any good. of our staff are like made to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. that's good. which like we haven't had to do but when it does when that does happen we do our best to respond and center the person who was made to feel uncomfortable and support them. Mm -hmm. um, How do you do that? So there was an instance where um, a young woman's butt got grabbed at a wedding and she was like going into bus and was in this like very crowded barn mm -hmm. and didn't know who did it. Um, and so 
we pulled her off front of house and let her stop serving and take as much time as she needed um, to like drink some water and breathe and mm -hmm. we didn't have much expectation for her the rest of the night but yep. she didn't have to keep serving mm -hmm. um, yeah. and because we didn't know who that person was we couldn't like I wasn't at that event mm -hmm. um, but I I think that we tried to minimize harm by pulling that person out mm -hmm. of that space right, and right. Um, we'll go to the event coordinator like the point person not like the bride or groom but the person who is like one of their friends or family members yeah. and yeah. tell them that this happened and yeah. that if their people don't stop acting like fools we will leave mm -hmm. and stop service right. yeah. mm -hmm. um, so I like that you in in a lot of um, you know conversations I have with people about like you know how do you respond to like an incident of harm like one of the first things that we usually say is like we'll ask the person what they need but I think in the case of like when you're a service worker and like you've been constantly operating under this like any kind of worker really it's like it's my job and right now my job is testing me and we don't often like you know it's just like okay I'm just gonna plow forward and so I think that that's a really good way to empower people to to feel like they can piece out of their work even though it's like yes I'm here to do this job mm -hmm. but I was actually harmed in this situation and my job is willing my work is willing to hold that space for me and that's awesome mm -hmm. and yeah and I wonder if more more of us who are in places that don't hold those systems of accountability like can feel brave enough to ask for that space too because that's what's hard mm -hmm. to do is when you're in that moment of like I gotta not go out there yeah um, yeah thanks for sharing that mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean there's been there's like other dynamics of like interpersonal like you were talking about where people have felt um, uncomfortable or like have felt as though the dynamic has gone too far among certain workers and we have workers who are in high school and mm -hmm. yeah. so just sort of like navigating that and holding space for people who feel uncomfortable and then checking in with people who are sort of contributing to the dynamic of discomfort yeah um and we've had meetings with like that where it's like sitting them down and being like hey people aren't comfortable with the way that you're behaving yeah yeah Good. So you have some inside accountability practice that's happening. Yeah. That's great. And it's messy, you know, it's like hard to know how to do it exactly right. Yeah. But. And sometimes we have to be messy. Like when we don't know and have systems in place, you know, it's kind of getting cozy with that discomfort of like, this doesn't feel, I, I love, I just have to reflect back to um, Lisa Scanlon's training on the Wheel of Consent. Is really interesting. Oh, yeah, I was like, about that. Uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I had to. Um, I was reminded that the way that I usually operate is that I don't usually ask for what I need. Um, that you know, it's usually me giving. Like I'm, the, I'm more of a giver than I am a receiver. Um, and I think that that. How did I want to tell that? Well, when we're when we're making big changes in our world like especially in the food and beverage industry where there isn't these systems in place we have to learn to ask for what we need and that's not an easy thing for a lot mm -hmm. of people i think a lot of people are in the place of like saying yes all the time and not being like no actually i can't do that mm -hmm. and this is what i need um so i think that being able to practice you know, that's what we're here today to learn and, and build some skills around is being able to understand that consent isn't just about, mm -hmm. consent and boundaries isn't just about like having a relationship or a romantic right. partnership of or course, sex. Yeah. You know, it's also relating. It's just mm -hmm. relating in the world and um, how to communicate better and how to name your boundaries and, yeah. and know, know when they're being um, violated. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and not respected. And so I'm really glad that we're all here showing up to do this. <laughs> yeah. So I want to lead us to... <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me, let me take a drink. I want to lead us into some questions. Can I share just another thing yeah. about the culture? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, please. So, yeah, at my work, I'm a worker owner uh, of Woodbelly, and I'm like the newest worker owner. Um, but I've been in a position of power there as like a manager for the last like year and like since before the pandemic as like an event lead. And I feel like, especially as like an old, like I'm in my 30s, like a lot of our workers are in their teens and 20s. Like, I just feel sensitive and uh, awkward about the banter sometimes because mm. like a lot of the jokes that I'm making are with people who are a lot younger than me. And so as like a person with power um, in the business, I try to just think about that a lot and like think mm -hmm. about the ways that um, my like I need that camaraderie and relationship too yeah. it's like a very cortisol based work environment and the banter is like That's a, a real like medicine mm -hmm. to yeah. it and right. yeah. I love that right. it's like the stress loop you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but just like yeah as a person with, of, with power trying to check in and be like hey am I crossing the line like please tell me and it kind of you know takes away some yeah. of the fun but like the discomfort is already there inside of me where yeah. I'm like I have a lot of neuroses and self-consciousness so just like checking in a lot and yeah. being like hey the stereotype is that the boss intentionally does these things to, to hurt people's feelings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I love that and it's I mean again the parallel with like yes we know this about sexual relationships like okay like we, we still have to check in from time to time. Is this still okay? Um, but we forget to do it in our friendships and in mm -hmm. work relationships mm -hmm. and professional relationships of like, oh yeah, that's important um, to right. keep that, um, that practice happening. So I had a question that I, I want to turn to you again, and I'm, I also have some feedback on it, but... So what strategies specifically does Woodbelly have in place to, um, to dismantle systems of toxicity or to support their staff in, um, in incidents? I mean, you, you named one of them at that um, one event that you had, which is really great, but do you, can you name like times, um, other times or like specific policies or values that you have in place mm -hmm. that help create that environment yeah. naturally? Yeah, um, so after that person's butt got grabbed, we put in all of our contracts moving forward that we reserve the right to stop service mm -hmm. at any time mm -hmm. if our workers feel uncomfortable, and that isn't, like, the first step that we take, but um, it's, like, the last step that we'll take if other things can't be met. Yeah. Um, we have a non-harassment policy that we take pretty seriously that people sign when they are hired with Woodbelly around um, discrimination and harassment and abuse mm -hmm. that includes like um, discrimination on basis of like ability, gender identity, sexuality, race, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and then I think it's pretty natural like a lot of the people that work with us are queer and trans and so I think there is like I don't really hear people say like hey ladies or whatever like people just yeah. say hi welcome y'all welcome yep. folks and um it's just kind of second nature which is really nice that's good um yeah and yeah I feel like there's I had a an event when I was like an early event lead where we were um, down in Killington and it was like a welcome party and it was like a very bro -y vibe and they were like throwing the football and mm -hmm. I think they intentionally threw it at my coworker and it hit her in the ass and like it hurt her really bad like it brought yeah. tears to her yeah. eyes and the way I responded was I just like yelled like what the fuck mm -hmm. and then I like felt inside of me like like I went silent inside I didn't know what to do um, because yeah. it was like me and her and yeah. like I think one other femme human and um, I just felt like I could have done better mm -hmm. um, and then like I could have been more explicit you know <laughs> and yeah. um, I think that the party people came over and were like 
apologizing and asking what they could do and I got them to get us like sodas and uh-huh. but um and like told them that that can't happen again or we'll leave I think but like it was one of those moments where like I felt like I could have done better and I like reflect on that a lot um yeah and like how to do better as a bystander um I think that's what we all struggle with that oh, absolutely. is is, yeah. is that like it's hard to not be reactive number one mm-hmm. when you're especially if you are a values-based person and you know that someone just was violated or harmed in some way it's like you just want to be like no you know or like mm. but learning that skill of like okay what's the right like that you know pause and reflect moment um, is the first thing that I try to go to personally. It does, doesn't, I, like, I'm not perfect, of, of course, like, but it's just, like, pausing and being able to find that, you know, if it's a call-in or a call-out. Um, and so that's maybe a good place to, be, like, I have some other things, but I wanted to introduce, um, Sean, um, Seth, I oh, sure. gave you, this is yep. the interrupting bias. Yep. Um, this was by the Seed the Way, Rebecca, I forget her last name, um, developed. Um, but it's really great. It's It gives you a bunch of examples um, that I have studied this from time to time when I'm like, okay, I'm actually like, don't know what to do in this moment. Or like, it, it's past, it happened yesterday. And I'm like, I wish that I had said, it sounded like you just said blank. Is that what you really mean? Like, I could have just said that. That's a simple thing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, or like in your example, like going over, like, I wonder if you meant to throw that at that person and hurt them. Like, you like calling that, you know, calling Mm -hmm. it in that way, like having like these canned responses prepped and ready to go. Mm has helped me up my game a little bit (laughs) but oftentimes I'm going back and I'm like okay I could have said this like and sometimes you have that opportunity too to go back you know especially if it's someone you work with and it's sometimes better to go back after you're not pissed and want to yell at them and you know just call that back and like hey what happened yesterday blah 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 like it made me feel this way like really angry and frustrated like I expected you would be respectful of that person's pronouns or whatever it is Mm -hmm. Um, and so calling in is that way of like trying to create more space and stretch it out open it up see where they're coming from see if there's a point of education and learning um, versus like a shaming and you know that that reactive reactivity response that we have Mm -hmm. that can actually shut someone down and um, make them less open for Mm -hmm. learning Mm -hmm. and understanding whereas calling out is um, a little bit more of a like I love their examples here but I always go to calling out as like the oh hell no like I we actually need to like stop this like moment and look at what you just said (laughs) you know you just said a really homophobic remark in front of this person who's standing here right now like let's let's break that open and sometimes you can like you know a call in and call out there's a fuzzy line um but definitely times when you're feeling like this moment calls for a response um and in a reaction from community that is that's not okay um and so these are some really good tips to doing that. So I just wanted to bring that up in this moment because I felt like that's what we were talking about. Yeah, that's awesome. So on this handout um, that I put together recently um, because we've had a lot of requests, um, I put the five Ds of interrupting bias. are really helpful to know um, that you don't you don't have to actually like respond in the moment you can direct someone else so directly address the incident as direct um distraction so there's also like you can drop you know play it on the floor oh, yeah, and get right. you know sense, yeah. it shifts the mm-hmm. dynamic yeah. um or if you're at a party like flickering the lights and you know someone yeah, who's yeah, like being abusive or whatever it'll just confuse the situation and hopefully stop it delegate sometimes asking a third party to come in and like help support you and like I don't really know what to do. This thing happened. Can we process and figure it out together? 
um, delay is that taking the action after the fact. So like, I need to digest this and think of a response and maybe like, you know, talking to co coworker management, um, documenting is, as you know, like we have had a lot of social change when we can Oh yeah, everyone has a evidence camera on their phone. Yeah. Of like, here you yeah. go, <laughs> this is what's happening right now in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, don't be, don't be afraid to get out your phone and hit record. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I love those just thinking about like, okay, I don't, I'm not actually, so like, I don't feel comfortable, like I feel unsafe addressing this on my own, but that's not my only option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I also love um, the pause. Like, hey, can I pause you right there? Like, sometimes just like saying, hey, can I pause you right there? Is enough for the person to realize, like, uh, oh, I, I'm so sorry, because it's just like your obvious next remark is going to be something. So I found when I've said, mm -hmm. like, let's pause for a second, it's a clear, like, you just said something and we need to pause and, like, look at that. And if they're like, yeah, what? It's like, what did you mean? Like, what did you mean by saying that? Like, you know that's not a kind way to treat your coworker or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, so the next thing that I wanted to do is like maybe reserve a little bit of this time. Um, if I could find our questions. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, I don't, I would love to also, also yes. hear from you, sure, Seth. Sure. Do you have experience? Do you have friends or or stories that you've heard in the uh, community or it, stuff that you want to share and bring into this conversation around, like... It, I I don't know much about it, but a while ago there was... I heard through the rumor mill that someone, some staff or... or um, Maybe not to, naming... Yeah, no, I, I won't name yeah. any names, but... Or the organization, but the... the there was some sexual harassment or assault happening and and then like i said that there wasn't it wasn't like i i did, couldn't find any report on it or anything uh -huh. and it just went under the radar maybe the person was fired maybe they're still there you just don't know and i mean yeah. that i've heard other stories other stories but then they're similar you know the business right. either closes down or it still continues and you just right. it's just not you just don't know what's going on. Right, you know? and so there's a part mm -hmm. of like being a community member mm -hmm. that here is like, do I want to s continue to support this business? Yes, or, yes, that's correct. You know, and then we have cancel culture, right? Where mm -hmm. there's oh, a yeah, fine yeah. line between transparency and accountability mm -hmm. and like actually, you know, canceling someone and yes. like, you know, restorative, transformative justice work, like gives us the opportunity to call in, mm -hmm. like here we bring that call in again, to call in and um, there are lots of different strategies. I know I was hoping that the Montpelier Community Justice Center oh, does yeah. a lot of that work. Yes. Um, yeah. Where they do a process where you can sit down with both parties and, and work through those issues. But it's true, it's like we don't, I mean, it's kind of taboo in a way to talk about mm -hmm. those sort of things, mm -hmm. but it's also, you know, how, how do we do that in a way that's not canceling a person? Like, right. then you have the right. whole community who's yes. like, I'm not going there ever mm -hmm. again. But yet we're left hanging with this, like, did what it happened? get resolved? Yeah. Like, what, mm -hmm. right. what happened? That, Can point, I go right. there now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And, I, I wonder if like a direct ask to someone confidentially like in an email of, of like hey like I'd just like to know like what's your policy around this and right, has that, that makes been sense. changed yeah. since, that, that's a good point, yeah. since X, Y, or Z has mm -hmm. happened back in 2016 or whatever mm -hmm. like I want to support your business but I also want to know that you <laughs> yeah. are accountable for your... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would be so nervous going up to the counter and asking them yeah, yeah, no, directly because the most email, probably yeah, or it's, it's the, the most probably the first time I'm directly asking isn't in any way response. I mean, in most cases, isn't responsible right, yeah. to someone in some back room somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 Thanks.
good question. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, Thank I feel you. like there is like a balance between, like I want people to, I want businesses and like projects to be able to have more transparency around that. And like, I feel like there is like a shroud of like shame around mistakes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when lines get crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like in some ways that is like healthy because it helps people to really take these mistakes seriously and like I feel like we need to be more humanizing of the ways in which the toxicity of the culture like manifests in our bodies and in our lives that's correct and mm -hmm. just like find ways to talk about how we can do better and like yeah yeah we had an instance last summer where some people perceived the interactions between two co-workers one of them a minor and one of them like 10 years older as like the older person grooming the younger person mm -hmm. and so these like younger but like adult people felt really uncomfortable and like triggered and like mm -hmm. re reminiscent of how they were treated mm -hmm. in the service industry as like young people mm -hmm. and um, the way that we handled that was we met with the person who was the older person and met with them and they had no recollection of anything but we mm -hmm. gave examples and then made it so that minors and adults don't drive in the car alone together mm -hmm. and yeah, that, that makes sense too yeah I was supposed to meet with the younger person and then I just dropped the ball and didn't meet with them yeah because some other intense things mm -hmm. happened and mm -hmm. They ended up finding out about it and we met recently and um, worked through it and I was like responsible um, for not following up with them. And, yeah. 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 But. Yeah, you definitely see a lot of, um, because, it, you know, there's such a, a huge wage gap in the service mm -hmm. industry. You have a lot of high school or st high school students that, you know, it's their first job and they're coming in and they're fresh and new. and excited to join the culture and then you have these you know older established folks and they're all becoming one family and and friend, friendships are forming but um yeah i've i've heard you know stories uh, from my friends in the industry of of just like knowing the right the you know the okay we actually shouldn't go out drinking together or right, like yeah. riding in the car like no i'm not going to drive you to this concert because it you know i'm 40 and you're 16 and that's just not a good like that was a a literal example from a recent story i heard from friends it's like yes you did the right thing that's probably a good idea and it helps the youngers understand that like that's not normal mm -hmm. for you know that of course like interacting and being in community together is different but that there are times when like your co-worker relationships can get, get tricky especially when you have that power dynamic and the age difference and experience difference mm -hmm. um so yeah 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 it can get scrambled because often that a lot of uh i actually i don't even know but uh, often a lot of sort of festival type things there's sort of a party that the, the yeah the, that the caterers have together and it becomes a mess it, or it doesn't become a mess but it can it can become yeah. a mess mm -hmm. definitely that's true um is ooh. do we have any other um want to workshop something that has come up in your world that geez I wish I said something different or like maybe you did maybe you were like I was able to step up and I said the right thing um, or I could have done it better is there any um, story you want to share or even a fake story <laughs> to do a little workshop time like let's try it out let's try like see well, if we can I'm, use this handout to, I'm, uh, like... I'm not really in the service industry but I uh, for a while I, I was sort of running what what was sort of like a boarding house and <laughs> and to to not go into de heavy detail there were a lot of strange dynamics that developed with yeah. a number of uh, people you know living together that were in dire most of them were in dire straits yeah. so yeah yeah did you have um any moments where you felt like you were able to 
support or mitigate tension or harm or moments where you... Well, I, I, I did the best I could, but what happened is a, a lot of all of the tennis ganged up on someone that I had known, you know, since I, since I was a child, and then it, it and and then it became a, a mess because yeah. the I sort the right thing to do would be, or the or the right thing to do in regards to the majority would be to listen to them, yeah. but I didn't really want to, so I put it put off addressing their concerns for as long as I could, and yeah. then and then the situation just got worse and worse until I had to evict this person I'd known since I was a child and her partner that, that was, you know, assaulting, assaulting her. And then, I, and you see, I, I had put them together on the same lease, which was a mistake. I, yeah. I, I should never have done that. But, right. but he wasn't paying anything. She was paying, paying all of it. And yeah. they were, you know, cohabitating. So I didn't really know what to do. Either, either I could have said he can't come there at all because he's not right. paying or, or, or I don't know. I mean, I, I should have, you know, put them on several right. leases. But, right, but and having, fault, you know. like, I think, so bringing this to the example of, like, I can tie it into mm -hmm. your sure. you know, tenant, tenant yeah. landlord situation, right. sort of. Sure, go ahead. Is that having policies in place? Yes, or like I, I needed policies in place. In contract or, mm -hmm. or that, like what you were saying, um, that you're, I don't know if it's your personnel manual or whatever contract that folks sign when they come on clearly states X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. It's like, so you learn, you know, sometimes it takes like learning from example of, uh, you know, okay, we need to address this situation is coming up and like, how do we prevent that from, from happening in the future? And yes. Like, mm -hmm. um, and one thing I, I wanted to mention too is that what I think is really wonderful and unique about Woodbilly um, is that because you have created these great systems, you have an awesome work team that are already kind of like in line with the values. Um, and I've had this question from from other local restaurants and bars of like, stuff is happening here. Like, how do we change the culture? Like, there's going to be pushback. Like, if mm -hmm. we do X, Y, and Z and try to bring in like you to do this bystander training or, you know, to come in with like, changing our personnel policy there's going to be a lot of pushback like that culture is already there mm -hmm. and that's a really good question you know it's like well you create the good systems and folks who are in alignment are going to show up and mm -hmm. you know you might lose some folks but maybe that's for the best mm -hmm. yeah, that or makes maybe sense, they're yeah. ready to change you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and that they value and understand that it's not their fault. It's a society they're raised in that mm -hmm. forgot to teach them <laughs> yeah. oh, that yeah, these yeah. things, like a shift is definitely happening in our world. And I love that, you know, I think the dark side is that cancel culture, but that like radical, like we need this change to happen now. And like service workers aren't less than, mm -hmm. um, and deserve equal, you know, respect of definitely. their boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Anything else before we close? No, but thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a good conversation. Thank sure. you. I'm glad it was mm -hmm. this intimate discussion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Sure, thank you. <laughs>